Hey y'all, guess what? It is Taco Tuesday. How is the popcorn kit doing? I know it's been a while, but we have a great story tonight. Guess what our story is? Our story tonight is Hansel and Gretel, and it's by Paul O. Zelensky. There are a whole lot of versions of Hansel and Gretel, this one, the illustrations are so beautiful. It's a uh, really fun story, but you guys, hey crew, popcorn crew, the women in this story have some issues. You don't get that warm and fuzzy feeling. And you know, we're gonna have a little discussion about this. But before we get started, are you the greatest? Yes, you are. Did you affirm that you're the greatest today? I'll do it for you. Let's do it together. Ready? Here we go. a witness I'm your witness and I'm going to tell you that you are the greatest let's get right into our story are you ready popcorn kid crew are you ready because Miss V is ready to read with you here we go you're gonna love this story it is so good and the illustrations are beautiful here we go. You ready, popcorn crew? Here we go. Make sure you can see the pictures. Here we go. At the edge of a great forest, there once lived a poor woods cutter. He could scarcely manage to feed his wife and his two children, Hansel and Gretel. And this made him feel miserable. The day came when there was nothing left to eat in their house but one loaf of bread, and he grew terribly anxious. Y'all, right now, I just want to give them some Doritos. Here, let me give you. Here, here you go. Okay, do you want it? Not right now? Okay, I'm not. Because you know, popcorn crew we share we share treats if I knew him if I lived next door to him and we could share our treats with his family wouldn't we share because sharing is important right popcorn crew we would share but as it says he was feeling so bad Look. He looks sad. What can we do to make him feel better? We'll see. His wife said to him that evening as they lay in bed, Listen, husband, there is something you must do if we are not to all starve. Early in the morning, take the two children, give them what little bread we have, and lead them into the forest. Hmm. Build a fire for them. And while it's burning, go away and leave them there alone. What in the world is she? Has she bumped her head? Is she, is she all right? Leave babies in the forest alone? With fire burning. Let's go ahead. Lord have mercy the slave. For a long time, the man could not reconcile himself to his wife's plans. 
He couldn't do what his wife was planning, but she would give him no peace until he finally agreed. Look, look at him. And look at the babies in the back. He doesn't want to leave his babies in the forest with a burning fire all alone. What does she think? Somebody's mama want to do oh, The children had heard everything their mother said and Gretel began to cry. I would have oh, cried too. Her feelings were hurt. Oh my good hush! Hansel whispered. It will be all right. I have an idea. So sweet. He wants to take care of his sister. He doesn't want to see Gretel cry. Then he got up as quickly as he could, put on his jacket, and he went outside. White pebbles on the ground glistened in the moonlight. Hansel carefully gathered them up and stuffed them in his pocket as many as he could. Then he went back inside. He lay down beside his little sister and he fell asleep. He has a plan. Popcorn kit crew. What's he gonna do with those stones? What's he gonna do with them? We'll see. Early in the morning, the sun had risen, and the parents came and awakened the children. To each one, they gave a little piece of bread. Gretel took both pieces and put them under her apron because her brother's pockets were filled with what? Who remembers what he put in his pocket? What did he put in his pocket? Pebbles. Now, after he put those pebbles in there, she knew what he was going to do, I think. Let's see if I remember. Then they all sat on the path in the forest. And while they were walking along, Hansel often stood still and peered back at the house. His father said, Hansel, why are you always looking and stopping and looking back? At the house. What are you doing? Why are you always looking? Oh, Hansel replied, just looking at my white kitten who's sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. Secretly, however, each time he gazed back, Hansel dropped one of the small white pebbles on the path. Good. He has a plan. The boy's mother said, just get going. That's not your kitten. It is the morning sun shining on the chimney. She's saying, that's not your kitten. It is the morning sun. What is wrong with her? But Hansel kept gazing back and each time he did, he let another stone fall. Hmm. See. Oh boy, this what happened. I want to leave the babies out in the forest all alone with a fire burning. What's going to happen to the little babies? That mother. Ooh. <clears throat> and so they went on walking for a long time until they were in the midst of the great forest. There they stopped and gathered firewood. Their father lit a huge fire 
And when it was burning brightly, their mother said, rest a while now, children. Oh boy. She's telling them to rest. Well, when they rest, what's going to happen? Your father and I are going off to cut up some wood. Wait here by the fire until we come back. The children sat by the fire and they ate their bread. They waited until nightfall. But their parents never did return. When it grew very dark, Gretel, what do you think Gretel began to do? She began to cry. I would too. I would be sad. But Hansel said to her, wait just a little longer until the moon is up. He's such a good brother. He loves his sister. He's telling her everything's going to be all right. And when the moon was up, the white pebbles gleamed in the moonlight and showed them their way. Showed them their way where? What do you think? Hansel and Gretel, hand in hand together, walked through the night. In the morning, they reached their home. Their father rejoiced. He was so happy to see them, for he had not been happy about what he had done. But how do you think the mother felt? It says their mother was angry. She was angry. Look, they're so happy. Look at them. They're running. You can see their little feet. They're running. Oh, and let's see what's going to happen. Not long after again, there was almost nothing to eat in the house. And again, and again. And after going to bed, the children heard their mother tell their father that he must take them into the forest deeper this time than they had gone before. What is wrong with, what is wrong with her? goodness. And again, Gretel began to cry. And again, Hansel got up very quietly to go over and gather some more pebbles. But when he got to the door, guess what? His mother had locked the door. Oh my God. His mother locked the door. Hansel, too, grew sad that he could not comfort his baby sister. He's a good brother. Oh. He's a good big brother. She's sad. And she should be. She's sad. Early in the morning before daybreak, they all got up and each of the children were given a small piece of bread. As they walked along, Hansel often paused and gazed back. And his father asked, My boy, why are you always stopping and peering back at the house? Oh, he answered, I'm looking at my little pigeon who is perched on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. Secretly, however, he had crumpled up his bits of bread and each time he turned around, he would drop a crumb on the path. You know, if he had some Doritos, he could drop them on the path. He could spread these out. Just like the breadcrumbs. Are you enjoying this story? It's really good. I'm enjoying it. So every time 
he turned around and looked back, he would drop little breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Good plan. His mother locked the door so he couldn't go out and get any. Guess what his mother said? Would you just keep on going? That's not your little pigeon. It's the morning sun striking on the chimney. But Hansel kept glancing back each time he did. He would drop another crumb. And when they had come even deeper into the forest to where it was the thickest, they stopped. Their father built a huge fire and their mother told them to rest and wait while they went off to get more wood. Seriously, we know, come on now. We've been through this before. What's she going to do? Are they really going to come back? She wants them to rest. Oh, boy. Gretel gave him half of the bread. For her brother had strewn all of his along the path. They waited until evening, but no one came to fetch them. You see Hansel back there in the back? Look at the mother's face. It's not a warm and cozy feeling. Look at, look at the mother. I wonder why she's, why she like that. It's okay. We're just going to hope that everything work out with her. You know how these stories always turn out. You'll see. When it grew very, very dark and the moon rose, Hansel looked for the breadcrumbs. But they were gone. The, the breadcrumbs were gone. Well, what in the world happened to the breadcrumbs? Any of my popcorn kid crew want to guess? What you think happened to them? I can think of some things. Let's see what the story, let's see what the story says. The thousands of woodland birds had pecked them up and eaten all of them. Hansel still meant to find his way home, and he pulled Gretel along after him. They walked all through the forest and all the next day. But guess what, y'all? They got lost. They got lost in the forest. That must be scary. That's a scary thing. Can you find him? I see him. You see him? That awesome. Right there. That's a scary feeling. They were in there for a couple days, it seems like. Ooh. Look at this. On the third day, they were chilled cold and they were hungry. They came upon a little house that was built out of bread. Its roof was made of pancakes and its windows of sugar candy. The children were so happy to see it that they ran up to it. Hansel ran up to the spongy roof and Gretel ran up to the panes of the window and they ate greedily. They were hungry. They've been in the forest for three days. They wanted a snack. Again, if I saw them, I would say, let me have some of my snacks, because we share. You can have some of my snacks. Hansel was devouring a huge chunk of the roof and Gretel was pushing out yet another window pane when they heard a thin voice call out from inside. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Who's gnawing on my house? 
The children were frightened that they fell and what they had in their hands, they fell down and what they had in their hands, they let it go and it fell. Child would have thought they were in trouble or something probably. Just then, a gnarled old woman came gliding out of the door. When she caught sight of the hungry children, she wagged her head and said, Oh, you poor little things. Come along with me. There's plenty to eat inside of my house. I'll take good care of you. And she took them both by the hand and led them inside her house and served them a fine dinner. Then she made up their bed and the tired children lay down and fell asleep. It's a little trick. It's a trick, y'all. Look. It's a trick. Don't fall for it. Don't go. Oh, it's a trick. The next morning, Hansel and Gretel were awake. The old woman crept up to their bedside as she watched the two of them sleeping so sweetly. She thought to herself, hmm, now there is a tasty morsel for you. What's she going to do? Eat? She going to eat them? This is a, it's a trick, you guys. It's a trick. And she lifted Hansel up and carried him outside and locked him up in a little stall. As if he were a little piglet. Then she went back inside and shook Gretel awake, yelling, Get up! Get up, you lazy girl! I, well, I thought this was a nice little old lady. What? What happened? Mm, mm, mm. Go out to the well and draw water and then get to work and make something good for us to eat. Your brother is in that stall over there. First, we're going to fatten him up. And when he is fat, I am going to eat him. Can you imagine what Gretel is feeling? First she was resting, and then the lady shook his... Oh my God, the lady's hand is around Gretel's neck. It's not against the law to put your hands around somebody's neck. Gretel was terrified of the old woman, yeah, I would be too, and had to do as she was told. Every day she brought Hansel water and lots of good food to eat. She herself got nothing but crayfish shells and each shells, oh my goodness, crayfish shells. And each day the old woman went to Hansel's stall and told him, to stick out one of his fingers so she could feel if he were growing plump. And each day Hansel held out his bone instead of a finger. You know, Hansel, he's smart. He's a smart little boy. One evening after four weeks had gone by, and it still seemed that Hansel was growing no fatter. The old woman said to Gretel, Now, be quick about it and go out and fetch some water to fill the cauldron. Tomorrow morning, whether or not your little brother is fat, I am going to slaughter him. 
my gosh. And I'm going to boil him while you are getting the water. I will be kneading the dough. We'll bake bread while he's cooking. What in the world is wrong? Ow. Ow. I would run away. I would get him and run away from this crazy lady. You're not going to boil my brother. You're not going to slaughter my brother. And you're not going to eat my brother. Here, have a Dorito. You want a Dorito, little old lady? Eat a Dorito. I'm not eating little kids. What's wrong with her? Early in the morning, when Gretel got up to light a fire under the cow drum that's full of water, why is she doing that anyway? Come think, why is she? She's getting the cow. Okay, well, let's see what's going to happen. The bread was already in the oven. The old woman called out to Gretel. Come over here. Right now. It smells as if the bread will be done soon. And my eyes are weak. I want you to look and see if the bread is turning brown. Mmm. I wouldn't trust this lady. Mmm. I don't know about that. She wants her to go over to the oven to see if the bread is turning brown. Hmm, I think this old lady has a plan for Gretel as well. If you can't see far enough, then get in this board and I'll push you in. There's plenty of room in that oven. Once you're inside, you can take a good look. Well, why is she going to get in the oven? And why is she going to get on top of that plank? Who wants to get inside? Do you see this oven? Look. Let's see what she does. Now, the old woman really meant to leave Gretel in the oven to roast. But Gretel could tell what the woman had in mind. And said to her, I'm not quite sure how to go about it. Could you show me? If you get in, then maybe I can try to push you in just to see if it works. Oh my gosh. So Gretel is wising up. She's like, you do it. I'm not sure how to do it. Why don't you do it? You do it. And the little old woman sat on the board and Gretel pushed her in the oven. Yes, yes, yes. She pushed her in as far as she could. Then she slammed the door and fastened its iron bolt. Inside the oven, the old witch screamed. Oh, they call her a witch now. So far, she's been just the old woman or the old lady. Now she's a witch. Now they're changing the character around now. She probably always was a witch. She was screaming and yelling while she was in the oven. And while Gretel was running away, the old witch burned to ashes. Ooh. Gretel ran directly to Hansel's stall and let him out. She told him what she had done and the happy, the happy children hugged and they kissed one another. You see Hansel over there, and she's pushing the lady in the oven, or the witch. Sorry, witch. Witch in the oven. One last time, they went back inside the witch's house. Everywhere they looked, 
were precious gems and sparkling jewels. They took all they could carry with them and set off for home. They walked and walked and walked. At least they began to become familiar with the woods. They were becoming familiar. They remembered, they, I guess they've been out there so much. He said, I know where I am now. When they arrived home, their father wept with joy to see them. Their mother had died. He told them. Hmm. Every day that they were gone, he had been filled with sadness. Now they emptied their pockets of the glittering jewels and the woodcutter and his children lived happily and prospered to the end of their days. The end. Well, Popcorn Kid Crew, what you think about that story? The women definitely had some issues in this story. I really love that the big brother wanted to take care of his sister. And I love that the children were able to meet back up with their father, who loved them so much. No matter what, you can always find love because love conquers all. And I love you all, the Popcorn Kit Crew. And I wanted to know, have you received love today? Have you received some love today? I hug every one of you. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you soon. Kisses. Peace and love. Until next time.